you know, just going body part by body part, checking in with yourself because our focus goes where our attention goes. So if we're able to reconnect with our body and see how we're feeling, it tends to create more of a flow, an ebb and flow, because we're able to put our energy there and release maybe some parts that are a little bit more tense at that moment. So it's just reconnecting. And that brings more of an alignment with how you're feeling throughout the day. So you can continually shift your intentions on what you mean to be doing what we're here for, what your purpose is that day. And it creates more of an overall sense of peace. So, and it doesn't have to take long, right? We could be the busiest doc who just goes, okay, in between patients, I'm just going to see how I'm feeling. And then another tool I love to use is bringing the same practice to the morning because the morning time is when we get to create space to choose how the day is going to go. There's always going to be things throughout the day that come in and can pick us up off our feet and make us go, oh my goodness, like this is stressful. Hey there, my friend. Welcome to the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina. I am a cardiothoracic surgery PA with a background in public health and neuroscience. I'm also your peak performance coach. I had to say no to working extreme long hours where I was always on call and feeling exhausted, underappreciated, and undervalued, and said, heck yes, to a life and career that elevates my energy and passion without compromising my health and sanity. Now, I'm among the mission to support ambitious healthcare professional like you with a demanding career to become a confident leader who are living purposefully and fulfilled to truly be both a powerhouse in your career and a passionate person in life. Let's start our journey today. Hi, everyone. This is your host, Sabrina, for the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, We have the honor of having Dr. Holly with us. Hi, Holly. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. Um, We have the honor of having Dr. Holly, who is a physical therapist specialist, and she's going to talk to us about what is the missing piece in physical therapy. It's not just healing by doing exercises. So get excited and join us and let's go. I'm so excited about this conversation. Again, thank you. Physical therapy, right? You think body, the word physical is in the name. But something I realized throughout my practice as a physical therapist is something so, so important to the healing journey is to be able to bring the mind component into it. The emotional body is just as healing because it's so interconnected, sometimes even referred to as one, with the physical body. So my work is devoted to bringing the healing to a more holistic approach, incorporating mindset, brain set, and physical therapy practices for more of a whole body experience. So that's what I do. I call it holistic physical therapy. And it's just been such a journey, important relating to the body. And it's our emotional body, our mind, the way we think, the way we interact in society, and the way that the patient is actually going to create a system in their life to recover, to rehab. We need to be looking at the whole person. And that means bringing presence to the mental, the mind, the emotional part of the body and looking at the person as a whole. So I'm super passionate about blending the two, about touching on the emotional and the physical in the world of physical therapy and modern health today. That's awesome. Holly and I actually did a a live a few months ago where she really showed events through a Zoom on how do you even use your posture better every day. I think a lot of time we forget where we are. We simply are just in motion of just doing. We're not realizing how we sit, how we bend over awkwardly to exam patients or even just daily mundane activities are detrimental for our body. For sure. And part of that is just bringing presence to how you're doing throughout the day. 
because yes, we're busy. Yes, we have lots of things to do, but the hustle culture, the go, go, go leads to such a disconnect between how we feel in our bodies. So it can be just checking in every hour on the hour or setting an alarm a few times throughout your day to go, okay, how am I feeling in my body? How am I holding my posture? Because even that forward slumped posture, we need it to work sometimes, or we don't need it, but we tend to drift that way. This also mimics the fear posture. Your body goes into the somatic state where we mimic fear, and our mind is going to process that in that way. And it can create all sorts of tensions in our upper back, neck area, mid back and low back. And yes, it's from the physical. Yes, our muscles are going to over time want to tighten up in the front, lengthen and weaken in the back if we're constantly going in that position, right? But We also get to look at how the mind responds to that. And if we kind of kick it from both ways, we can create more of a whole healing experience. And I just think the presence for that is so important. That's wonderful. And share with our audience a little bit. How did you get into this specific niche of feeling that there is a gap? There is a missing piece. It's not just fixing our pain by doing different exercises or having the physical therapist to evaluate you and pinpoint this is the one muscle group that you're having problem with. But there's a lot more to that with how we perceive pain, how we're actually carrying our activities. Sure. Yes, it happened so naturally for me. Like I never went, this is what I want to start studying and what I want to go into. But when I started my career as a physical therapist, I started in a sport and spine clinic and 80% of the patients there were spine patients and had pain either on and off or chronic symptoms. And I would go (laughs) and I would do everything I learned in the textbook and go through all my notes and just realize that there were always a big chunk of people who didn't get better with this stuff or just couldn't get in the position because it was too painful. I wanted to help people to my full capacity. So that's when my research started to dig a little bit more into pain science. And that led me into lots of mind science and the subconscious mind and creating presence and how it's all tied together. Because we don't really learn that much in school. We had one to two lectures on pain science, just kind of touching the different types of pain. But having a human in front of you who's not getting better, who's multifaceted, multilayered, who has nuances that aren't in the textbook, I really had this desire to look a little further to be able to help them a little more. So that led me into it initially, just the desire to help. And then we had talked about this last time, how I started my own online business. And in the online world, I felt most comfortable treating the spine through the camera, first of all, and since that's what I was most experienced in. So that one-on-one container, when it was mine, you know, it just really strengthens the desire to be able to help. This is all about service and love and helping people get back to their full quality of life. It's definitely a area when we don't feel well, it has many different layers that implied into you can't function as well in your career. You wouldn't be able to have enough physical stamina to do the things that you love to do. For people who has back pain, think about how many hours can you really sit or stand if you are the type who actually wanted to go hiking and wanted to do different activities, play soccer, and how can you warm up? How can you heal yourself when you're already in a state that you are having difficulty even on a daily routine? And for many of us who are younger, I feel like that's something we're missing is that we feel like we can do everything and your body just recover. But sometimes it's not really true. We have these methods that we need to do to allow ourselves to think differently. So what would be some of the suggestions you will give to our listeners in terms of what to pay attention to? And so then you can bridge the gap and not feeling like, oh, I just quickly warm up and that that's enough. Yeah, definitely. A few things would be kind of what we touched on earlier is just checking in with yourself throughout the day. I would put timers three to five times a day if that model works for you. It's called a somatic body scan. You just start, maybe if you have time to close your eyes, 
how do my feet feel right now? How do my shins feel, my lower legs? How am I feeling in my thighs and my hips? And just noticing, not trying to judge it or put like, oh, it's a little in pain. That must mean this. No, it's just kind of noticing how you feel, right? Can I put a few big belly breaths in my belly? How do I feel in my chest? Holding the posture, I really, with the tight, I really truly am right now. You know, just going body part by body part, checking in with yourself. Because our focus goes where our attention goes. So if we're able to reconnect with our body and see how we're feeling, it tends to create more of a flow, an ebb and flow, because we're able to put our energy there and release maybe some parts that are a little bit more tense at that moment. So it's just reconnecting. And that brings more of an alignment with how you're feeling throughout the day. So you can continually shift your intentions on what you mean to be doing what we're here for, what your purpose is that day. And it creates more of an overall sense of peace. So, and it doesn't have to take long, right? We could be the busiest doc who just goes, okay, in between patients, I'm just going to see how I'm feeling. And then another tool I love to use is bringing the same practice to the morning because the morning time is when we get to create space to choose how the day is going to go. There's always going to be things throughout the day that come in and can pick us up off our feet and make us go, oh my goodness, this is stressful. And then our body goes into stress and then we just stay there. It brings us back so we know how to navigate back to center through all of our human emotions and experiences throughout the day. And it gives us an opportunity to hold that vision for the day, for six months, for 12 months. If we're holding on that vision, we know the next steps to take that day, the next one right step the next couple steps you can take. So we're always on the right track, but bringing presence to it and not clinging to the moment. And that can just be a five minute, I'm breathing. Some may call it meditating, but just that state of being where you just notice where you want to go and how you're doing. (laughs) Those are my two favorite practices. That's great. Checking in with yourself. It doesn't have to be that long. Very similar to what I've been teaching you guys on the using the two minute micro mental vacations. Now that's a slightly more involved because yes, you can do at work, at your desk, outside at home. We can be more in tone with our breathing. How do we calm ourselves and with visualization, with checking in where our body is, just like what Dr. Holly is saying to you, and also using our sensory to boost that part of our immunity, energy, and calm ourselves. So there are plenty of tools out there. You guys can check out the show now. We'll share these for you as well. And it's awesome that when we are able to check in with ourselves, then you know what you did really well and then where everything doesn't feel so good and you can reset. If we don't check in with ourselves and we keep going, then your body start get too used to the pain or discomfort and you even forgot about it and then you become a problem. I love how you use the word reset too, because our body's naturally resetting on its own. The nervous system has an innate ability that it resets all the time without us even knowing it. When we bring that unconsciousness into consciousness, bringing awareness to how we're feeling, we can continue resetting more towards the relaxed and rested state instead of going more towards the other end of the spectrum, which we call the sympathetic state, the fight or flight state. So it's kind of resetting in the direction we want to be going. (laughs) Exactly. All right, guys, one thing that I love to talk about is also self-reflecting. Where are we in life and not just our health? Health is one component. You do need to feel well to do what you love to do. But what about everything else? Dr. Holly is the expert on your physical body and she incorporates the mental side, the energy side into how you think about pain, how you think about your functionality so you're not blocked in your way of healing. On top of that, I also ask all our speakers to give their reflection on their whole life assessment. As many of you know, what I help you to do is find out your number one killer in creating that harmony. And Dr. Hotley shared with us her results. And so I'm going to quickly show you guys what that looks like. 
So she did really well. She is totally in tone with her life mission, her career path, and her spirituality, her personal growth. And many of these things are intertwined. And that's how we grow. That's how we move forward. But what are we identifying is that hidden roadblock that we know it probably wasn't working, but haven't really tapped into. And things that she said she wanted to focus on are her love relationship, her social life, her financial intelligence, and her career achievement. And the one reason she said that stopped her from getting 10 out of 10 perfect on everything is her financial stability, which is very much aligned with her number one killer. It is financial intelligence. I guess it's not too surprising for you in that sense. I think that's true. <laughs> Looking at your life and thinking back on when you were taking that assessment, what would be something you wanted to tap more into with leveraging on your strength? And how would you now thinking about the financial intelligence part to pivot and allow yourself to get into a higher level? Definitely. I think the advice that I say all the time that would be great to put into that is your focus goes where your energy goes. So if I'm putting my energy to my finances and making logical KPIs towards that, then it definitely needs to shift. This year, you guys, I know 2020, we're in the midst of this crazy year, has been quite the roller coaster and the self-discovery path for me as well. We're in this together. And I kind of took it with, okay, what is my purpose and where can I help people the most? Which led me again, like I said before, to starting my own business. And with that has come a lot of financial instability because I paid for very expensive business coaches and resources to get it going. So my plan now is to bring it all into full balance and harmony. So now everybody knows so we can keep me accountable for that. I love this. <laughs> love it. And without having that coach who will guide us to get to the where we need to go, our destination quicker, then we're going to take a lot longer time and probably hit more bumps in the road. And ultimately, the best investment you give yourself right, to create something that you truly passionate about and you know you can create something awesome and really valuable to serve others. So I definitely applaud you for all the encouragements and the courageous act that you're showing up for other physical therapists that you can do it. You can create that telemedicine business and still thrive as an individual. You don't really need to have all the partners lined up before you're thinking about you need to do it. So thank you so much for showing everybody else your courage. Thank you so much. That means a lot. And for... Everyone who's considering if they ache the pains or different ways, what would be some of the major things that you help people with so they would want to reach out to you and connect to you? Sure. Yeah. My container for healing is a little bit different than the conventional model. So while I do what you can expect from a normal physical therapy practice, I also have specific modules that we go through in a bit of like a course type way where we teach how the mind and the emotional body is connected. So you can start to become a little bit introspective about your process. And then there's different practices that will go along with that. Think meditation, think individualized affirmations, think breath work. That's a big way to regulate the nervous system, embodiment work, as well as the exercises that are individualized to your evaluation. So it's a little bit more intimate container. You're going to question some things about yourself, but I believe it will lead to more of a healing experience at the end of the day. That's perfect. Please tell our audience, how can they reach out to you, whether it's best on social media or your website? Social media, I'm always hanging out on. So Doc Holly Health is for everything. So D-O-C. H-O-L-L-Y, and then the word health. So send me a DM. And then I also have a website that's the same thing, doccollyhealth.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Everyone, if you love this episode, we would love to hear your feedback. What do you love about it? And then share with other people who actually can also benefit from this. 
sharing is loving. And for any of you who want to hear future topics, something that you have been dying to know, send me a email or personal message at Sabrina Rombach, my phone name. Email is Sabrina at SabrinaRombach.com. I appreciate all you guys listening in. Have a good day. All right, my friend. How did you love this episode? Make sure to subscribe to our show so you can continue to build your positive intelligence for that beautiful mind of yours to live powerfully and passionate. I know this is just the tip of the iceberg. You probably have a lot more question on actually how do I implement those things into my own life? Well, this is the solution. Joining us inside the private Facebook group Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash powerful passionate where I go live weekly to answer any questions that you have and continue to put more resources for you to help you to get to that point. You can be both powerful and passionate where you're no longer working on any mundane work and truly focusing on the things that matter. You can be both powerful and passionate where you can overcome any mental roadblocks keeping you from success. You can be both powerful and passionate where you feel energized from the moment you woke up to the time you go to bed. Join me and together we can create a life where you can be both powerful and passionate.